Hi, welcome. In my previous video, we have discussed how to visualize a cylindrical coordinate system. In this video, we are going to check how to represent differential elements in cylindrical coordinate system. We have already seen how to represent differential element in Cartesian coordinate system. If you have not watched that video, I will suggest you the video as well as I will provide the link in description. Please watch that video before watching this for better understanding. So, we will consider a point P which has three coordinates rho, phi and z in cylindrical coordinate system. Then each coordinate will be increased by a differential amount and we need to calculate what is the differential increments in rho, phi and z. So, first let me consider an x, y, z coordinate system. Then a point P represented by half plane. So, this point P is somewhere here. If you are not following this, you have to watch my previous video on cylindrical coordinate system. It was well explained how to locate point P in cylindrical coordinate system in that video. Okay. To continue, we know that this point P and this is azimuth angle phi measured with respect to x z plane or x axis. Then this point P will be located on the surface of the cylinder. So, I am representing the cylindrical surface on using a bottom surface of the cylinder. Okay. So, the cylinder passes like this. The radius of the cylinder can be measured as rho. The height of this point P in the sense point P from x y plane is at a height of z all this we know. Okay. Now, I have to consider another point okay, maybe P dash which is at an incremental distance from this point p okay so let this be uh, p dash okay so this is the half plane representing the new point p dash which is at some distance from p now this half plane forms an angle and another angle phi which is slightly larger than my initial angle Okay, that is the basic idea, right? We are incrementing or we are changing the existing coordinates by a small differential value. So, now this total angle becomes phi plus d phi, a small increment of d phi we have, and this point P will be on the surface of the cylinder and the radius of the cylinder also will be increased by a small value d rho. So, the total radius is rho plus d rho and height okay, or z will be incremented by again a small value dz. So, I have z plus dz. So, I have located a point p as well as a point p dash a new point p dash with help of cylindrical coordinates. Now, to obtain differential length, differential volume and differential surface area, we should be able to visualize this in a better way. So, I am going to project these points, okay. I am going to project these points to get a three dimensional view or a three dimensional projection of these new points. So, what I am going to do is I am going to extend the first plane, I will redo that. I will extend this plane 
to touch my new cylinder surface okay then from there i'll drop the perpendicular to the height of my p or p dash then from this point where my second plane half plane touches the first cylinder from there i will draw another projection so this is my incremented angle d phi i hope it's nice to visualize okay incremental angle d phi so that is how it will be projected on outer cylinder so this is that pro same projection d phi okay now i am drawing i am using this projection i am projecting it onto this plane so that i'll get a three dimensional incremented volume so see now i have projected this area here hope that is very clear this area which is formed by these half planes and these cylinder surfaces so i have projected it here now i will project it further to get to complete this volume so this forms one surface so see here the same surface is projected here also so now this will give me the idea of incremental phi incremental row as well as incremental set right because this particular differential volume element will give me idea about the differential elements in all the three coordinates right so this this is the incremented phi so i noted it as d phi and as you know this will be rho so this this was rho so this also will be rho it will remain same it is just a projection then i have the incremental height dz then i have right this this is dz because this this height is dz so i have dz projected there then i have d rho which is nothing but the incremental radius of the cylinder which is actually here so projected over there okay so it's actually here now projected onto this differential volume so now i have d rho i have dz i have d phi once i have incremented phi incremented rho and incremented z i can easily write what is differential vector length so from the initial point p which has which was on the surface of cylinder having radius rho now the point p is shifted to a cylinder surface whose radius is rho plus d rho so radius of the cylinder has increased by d rho and this increased d rho can be measured right as a differential length in r direction so this d rho can be measured as a differential length increment in rho direction okay so d rho so this d rho can be measured as incremental length in rho that is this rho plus d rho along rho direction along radial direction okay now how to measure incremental d phi d phi is the change in angle phi right and it is not the differential length but see how can i measure it is due to the change in d phi there exist an arc right this arc is formed because of this d phi this arc is formed because of this d phi and this arc depends upon this length also right so due to change in d phi there exist a differential arc length in phi direction this differential length due to d phi in phi direction can be easily written as rho d phi i hope it is very clear okay this this arc length is to be measured because i am measuring differential length so the first one is d rho 
which is in raw direction okay that is very clear the radius is increased radius is in length so you can increase that much so that is d rho but when you go for d phi increment d phi is angle so it's not going to give you any length so i'm considering the arc length for the increment of phi that is d phi so how to measure this arc length this arc length depends upon this distance and this angle so it is measured as rho into d phi that is why the differential length in phi direction is written as rho into d phi in cylindrical coordinate system this is very important to understand okay now the last one that is differential length along z direction so it's very clear from the geometry so the differential length along z direction is nothing but dz this was said now i have shifted the point to here so accordingly this will be the new length so length is changed by dz so knowing differential length in rho direction differential length in phi direction and differential length in z direction i can write the total differential length okay vector length as dl vector which is nothing but yeah d rho in rho direction added with rho d phi in phi direction added with dz in z direction so this is my differential vector length in cylindrical coordinate system now from this discussion itself we can easily find out what is the differential volume of this differential element so differential volume because this is a differential volume now so how to find volume of this particular projected three dimensional object so that is nothing but yeah length into breadth into height i can use right because i can approximate this as a small straight line because this is a small arc so i can approximate it as straight line right line segment or length so i can treat this as a volume a cuboid and i can measure this volume as length into breadth into height so this length is rho into d phi so rho into d phi into dz into d rho will give me the scalar volume or differential volume so differential volume can be easily written as dv as d rho rho d phi dz okay or it can be better written as rho d rho d phi dz so this is my differential volume in cylindrical coordinate system so we have seen what is differential length as well as what is differential volume in cylindrical coordinate system so now we have to check how to represent differential surface areas in cylindrical coordinate system so differential length i have single length differential volume i have single volume but when i say differential area i used plural that is differential surface areas that is because you will have this side area okay both the sides then you have this dz area okay this area then you have the top area in the sense you will have surface areas with respect to rho with respect to z and with respect to phi making total six phases of this volume so let us see how to represent these three surface areas to understand each surface i just redraw that okay so relax for a sec so first we will consider uh, this surface okay that is d z and rho d phi so which is that surface so this is that surface okay is that clear this surface. so i have projected this surface here okay so when i project this surface i have arc length as rho d phi and height is this next i will consider the side surface that is this surface or the <coughs> other surface which is parallel to that so if i project that i will get surface something like this where i have d rho as the length and dz as the height now the only surface which is remaining is the top surface or the bottom surface anyone you can consider okay that is 
this surface or this surface. So that is nothing but D rho and rho A. Okay. Now the vector representation of these differential surface areas are very important. So we have to decide upon unit vector of each surfaces for this surface that is for the particular first surface. The unit vector will be perpendicular to this surface. So, so unit vector perpendicular to this surface will be a rho cap radial outwards, right? Perpendicular to this surface will be my radius vector. So a rho cap. So this particular differential surface area will be known as differential vector surface area normal to r direction. That is ds vector. So we write it as ds rho. Okay. Now the next surface, this surface, we need to identify the unit vector or the direction of this surface. So this surface is nothing but the side surface. So this side surface will travel like this, right? In phi. This side surface can shift only in phi direction, right? So this surface. Or the normal vector to this surface will be a phi cap, a phi cap, and the differential vector surface area normal to phi direction will be represented as d s phi vector. Fine. Okay. Now the last surface, that is top surface or bottom surface, top surface or bottom surface, the perpendicular vector, normal vector away from the surface will be a s phi cap. Right, because that's perpendicular. So for any surface area, we have to consider a perpendicular vector as the direction vector or unit vector. So here it will be S cap, and this differential vector surface area normal to set direction can be noted as D S vector. Okay. Now knowing this, I can easily mathematically express what is D S rho vector. That is differential vector surface area normal to rho direction as length into breadth. I told you that already that this can be approximated as a straight line because a very small surface. So it is length into breadth. So d z into rho d phi is d s rho. And in, if I represent direction also, I can write it as a vector. So the differential vector surface area normal to rho direction is given by rho d phi d z. Okay. Now, ds phi similarly, ds phi vector can be written as d rho into dz in f i cap direction, and ds z vector can be written as rho d phi d rho or rho d rho d phi in s cap direction. So this gives me the differential surface areas in cylindrical coordinate system. So in this video, we have seen how to represent Differential elements like differential length, differential volume, and differential surface area in cylindrical coordinate system. If you found this video interesting, please share it with your friends. Like the video, please comment your feedback, and subscribe if you are new to this channel.